Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Hemingway Jones Live. Normally, we're doing this on a Tuesday night, but it's a lot of fun to do it here on a Sunday and to do it in a time when my European watchers and viewers can appreciate it as well. So should be a lot of fun. I'm not going to make too many comments because I want to get to the headline act. A uh, gentleman who's used to playing stadiums, so this is going to be a bit like playing a intimate club for him. So, Oshin O'Malley, he's a creative mind behind his own eponymously named watch channel. And he does incredible videos that really give you a sense of the passion and the history and the romance of these pieces. He also does a live show here on YouTube called Who Needs a Drink? And he does a podcast called Serious Watch Talk that you can get wherever podcasts are found. Some say his heart beats at 28,800 beats per minute. But all I know, he's called Oshino Malley. So welcome him. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm great, man. I'm great. I'm actually normally coming to you, to you guys uh, from the channel uh, in Venice, Italy. But uh, right now I'm in uh, Lisbon, just about an hour and a half outside of Lisbon, Portugal. So I'm just here in the hotel room. I hope the lighting and the sound is uh, is going to work. It actually same. sounds really good now. So let's hope it holds up. You know, but okay. I, I like doing these things live. I think it gives it sort of an interesting dynamic, makes it a little bit edgier. You can kind of see how two people get to know each other during the process, and it just makes it a little bit more fun. Sure, sure. And I, if it's a I disaster, concur. people will like to watch that too. That's the way I love it. <laughs> oh, they love that. They love a good disaster. They people do indeed. Watch, watching the same part over and over again. <laughs> sure, sure, exactly. So uh, what? I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you which watch you were wearing at the moment. My God, I don't even have one on. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll pretend I have one on. Yeah, here. well, the one you were wearing, right? I got my, yeah. <laughs> this is a, a Seiko... Uh, King Turtle. This is the the uh, one of the Save the Ocean ones with the uh, manta rays on the dial. Oh yeah, beautiful, beautiful uh, kind of steely gunmetal blue dial on this. I love these watches. I brought several watches with me. Uh, we're at a very beautiful resort here, and uh, you know, for the restaurant, I have. Lovely pieces, you know, Ooh, yeah. Gay and, yeah, yeah, gold and so on. Very but nice. uh, but my friend, she wants to play some tennis and go horse riding and go to the beach and so on. So I figured I better bring a beater as well, yeah. something that can, something that can stand up to that kind of sweat and uh, and and pressure. So yes, I'll actually stick it on the wrist while I'm talking to you. All right, brilliant. Very good. Well, it's probably going to be a relief for you today because we're pulling you out of the watch corner of the internet. And you're kind of in our little NPR corner of fine writing instruments over here. And yes. uh, I think there's similarities, you know, because fine writing, it doesn't have the money influence. You, you buy a pen, you can spend $1,000 for something like a Mont Blanc. And then if you sell it in two years, you're, you're only going to get 600 So it's... Right. With some few rare exceptions, you just don't have that same money aspect. It's almost like Rolexes, APs and whatnot are almost like cryptocurrency now where they carry inherent value and can be traded like currencies now. Yes. In some, in some cases, yes, yes. Yeah. And so it's certainly kind of, uh, some of them hold their value. Some of them go go up in value. Yes. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of crazy stuff. Absolutely. And there is some overlap with Cartier and Mont Blanc. Cartier makes some really nice fountain pens. Um, I think they're made by Mont Blanc, actually. They're suspiciously similar. Uh, they just have a decoration that makes them very Cartier, you know? Right. Yeah. I'm not uh, I'm not too familiar. I, I love Mont Blanc pens or writing instruments. Uh, I wish I owned one. I do not. But I, I hope to fix that at some point in the future. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm not I'm not the expert that you are or anything close to it, but I do certainly appreciate a beautiful writing instrument, and have recently been photographing some next to watches, and they're a beautiful thing to even just photograph and film. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, and and it's similar with 
fountain pens and kind of a lot of where I've been inspired by you and I have been is the way you photograph has given me a lot of ideas and a lot of inspiration on how to really? portray. Yeah, absolutely. Um, pens just to get in. And when I came into making YouTubes about a year and a half ago, I saw this opportunity because there were a lot of technical videos and it was similar to, um, was it Watchfinder that has the dislocated hands? Yes. Right. Yes. And, and then there were some really slick like product ones. And then a lot of people that are really great at just talking to the camera and relaying personal experience, but there wasn't a lot of the passion and history, the kind of stuff mm -hmm. that, that you do. So I tried to bring a little bit of that into the, uh, fountain pen world oh i'm delighted if that's the case i'm honored um it's always been a thing for me to at least try to communicate um the feeling that people get from these things because i think it really boils down to that you can sit there and tell everybody the dimensions and the weight and the um, notable things about the watch uh but really it comes down to the feeling the person has about about the thing yeah. so in the same way as you might say well you know what this watch went to the moon or this watch was owned by a famous actor or musician and that will associate in your mind you'll associate that watch with that person or that event or something and that will make it ever more special or let me take another example if someone dear to you leaves you their watch maybe they pass on and they leave behind their watch, then you're always going to love that watch. And you're... Oops, looks like we lost Oshin. Maybe we can try. There we go. We'll get him back. Sorry, I lost you there. That's <laughs> Sorry. okay. It wouldn't be my show if there weren't technical glitches. So, uh... it's, it, you know, it's, it can happen. Okay, I'll watch yeah. out for that. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. uh, I didn't touch anything, but it might be the internet connection here in the hotel. Um, you know, association is a huge thing. So it, what I do with the channel is I try to create stories and environments mm -hmm. so that you see the watch kind of within that environment and that will stir up emotions and feelings and that way make maybe the, the watch more special or at least communicate what people are feeling when they you know fall over a watch or they gasp when they see that great watch they're after in the window it might explain some of of that at least you know it's not just a, a piece of steel or a piece of precious metal with a with a movement in it but there's something so much more there's a lot more passion in there yeah yeah and i think that comes across i think that's the part that was really interesting to me i mean you put up that recent video where you went shot by shot in the how you edit and why you made the editing choices that you made, which, you yeah. know, I like me, it's incredibly valuable. You know, I can learn a lot from that. But I yeah. think like today, some of what I like to focus more is is more the inspiration side and the, and the heart and the influences and kind of where you're going. So um, mm. let's dive okay. in a little bit. I got some. Yeah, more. yeah, yeah. Hit, hit, hit me. <laughs> go, hit you with go with yeah, right. Nothing uh, Mike Wallace style, so that you don't have to worry about that. Okay. But I just thought we'd talk a little bit about your creative process. So w when you embarked on your YouTube journey, and I think you got into it during the pandemic, as many people did, what, what did you see that you were trying to bring to YouTube that you weren't seeing out there? Um... Honestly, that happened afterwards. It was like I, I built, I built it, and then I noticed what it was. Mm. So it wasn't it wasn't preemptive. It wasn't sorry. I'm just pouring a glass of water here. Um, it wasn't preemptive. It wasn't okay. I'm gonna set out to do this. It was a natural thing. If you look at my very very first videos, they have very little of that kind of uh, artistic uh kind of uh, approach if you will mm -hmm. they're very uh they're, they're they're hands on the desk they're me for a few minutes and talking about something and then it goes straight to hands on a desk kind of thing and it's just talking about dimensions and uh features of the watch and prices of the watch and so on um but what happened is then i the more i started photographing 
the watches, the more fun I had and the more I noticed that uh, you can do a lot more and you can show a watch in its natural environment and make it so much more special. And just the natural uh, tendency I have after being you know, in the music business and the performance business for decades, sure. it, just, it was naturally something I take to. And I found myself kind of channeling uh, just artistic ideas into in through this particular channel, just somehow. It could have been anything. It could have been stamp collecting. It could have been model train sets or, you know, bird watching or some other hobby. But instead, it wound up being that one. And I think, I think it came out pretty nice. Um, so, but I do, now that I've kind of come way, way into that, and it has, they have different forms. Some of my videos are a bit more abstract. Some of them are very direct. Um, it, I'm looking back at them and going, oh yeah, I guess, you know, what I'm bringing to the table here is something uh, from a more emotional content mm -hmm. uh, angle than maybe other channels, even excellent channels who do a lot of work themselves and do incredible stuff with, uh, with photography and with narrative. Um, I think probably the best way to describe my channel is that the emotion, there's an emotional connection. Always, um, you know, it yeah. definitely, I mean, I, it's something I was going to bring up in one of my questions, but you do seem to time it. You seem to go kind of back to it. It's, it's a thread that's woven through and then has usually a big punch about 85% through the, the video with a bit of a denouement after, right? Thank you. Yeah. Good word. Um, yeah, I, I find myself telling a story in sure. many cases and sometimes circling all the way back to the beginning of the story again and making more sense and, you know, the classical kind of storytelling. And, um, and yeah, I think I, I, you may have noticed that music is a huge vehicle yes. on my channel. Yeah. And I find that music makes the connect, the emotional connection with people that they're watching it, it the images yeah. and and the music is affecting them through their ears while their eyes are occupied watching beautiful watches in beautiful places and um let me and, let me and that's that's the just yeah. cause I, I know like you're so good at this you could go off and tell me everything i need to know on your own but i just wanted if you don't mind and forgive me for interrupting but just put a little bit of structure to oh, it please, please thank you i appreciate that so you know, I'm Oshin, I'm walking around the Calais of Venice and, and then an idea comes to me. Where, where do those come from? When do they come? And, and come sort of in, in what form? They come in very random uh, and quite often inconvenient moments. Sure. Yeah. So, so, so going back to when I was writing songs with my band for decades, quite often you get an idea while you're sitting on a bus and you don't have a guitar around to start you know to write it down or you you wake up from a dream at 5 a.m and you have the song in your head and you're so tired and you think oh you know i'll remember it in the morning i'm going to go back to sleep and you never remember it you you, mm -hmm. you absolutely have to get out of bed and write it down or play it or even grab your iphone just hum it in because otherwise it's gonna it's gonna disappear good Did ideas you kind of journal is there a journaling aspect to this? Well, I've, I've managed to, I've, I started getting good at this okay. years ago, you know, at retaining the idea. I started getting good at it because I was sick of getting up out of bed in the middle of the night. Yes. You know, my, my girlfriend would get up in the morning and I'm there snoring away. And she's like, you know, why is he so tired? And you should go to the bathroom and there's a guitar and an empty bottle of beer on the floor next to the toilet seat she's like were you sitting in the bathroom in the middle of the night you know coming up with ideas like well, what's wrong with you um i got a little tired of those situations and i started developing systems i suppose naturally of retaining these ideas but yes the ideas come in random moments and you sometimes you're in the shower uh, sometimes you're just walking down the streets or you're staring out the window, whatever. And, uh, and the idea comes along. Now, sometimes it's a matter of just being observant. Mm. 
of just opening your eyes and realizing you're looking at a good idea, but you haven't noticed it yet. So just uh, yesterday or late last night, I published a new video on the Rolex Pepsi watch. Yeah, I caught yeah, that. BL, yeah, the BLRO, Very which well of course, fam- oh, thank you. And uh, which of course famously has a blue and red bezel. Yes. And uh, I, I went out and I started. Right now. Oh, you've got the, I have that yeah. one too. It's one of my favorite watches. Yeah. I love that watch. Thank you. Um, I'll do a video on that one soon as well. Yeah, You're going like to love that. it. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so famously that watch has blue and red. And I was mm-hmm. out shooting that watch around Venice as I normally do. And I got home and I offload all the footage into the computer. And then I usually go off and do something else, make dinner or, or something. And come back to the footage later that night or the next day. And when I did, um, and I was skimming through everything to see if things were in focus and see if I got any usable shots at all. Sure. Uh, and uh, I started noticing that in the background sometimes there was a blue chair and a uh, sorry a red chair and a blue pole. Yes. You know, or or uh, the, the covers, police lights. The police lights. Perfect. You know, right. It's just like the red and blue. Yeah. Sometimes and, the universe uh, provides. It sometimes it does, and and mm-hmm. just even just the other. Uh, I mean, there were some amazing shots that I it never occurred to me. I was just I was shooting um, the the Venetian gondolieri. You know, the guys mm-hmm. who who operate the gondolas. Sure. And they're all they're wrapping up their gondolas at the end of a working day, and they're putting tarps over the gondolas, and the, the gondolas have. Yeah, the gondolas have red seats, yeah. and these tarps they're throwing over them are blue. And I'm looking at the footage, going, "Oh my god, I couldn't have asked for a better shot." And then, you, and then you have that guilty moment, like, "Do you pretend you did it by, you know, on purpose?" Mm-hmm. You know, you say, "Oh yeah, it was me. It was, a, you know, it was a brilliant idea." Actually, it wasn't. I, I just it was a complete accident. Then, then the other night, um, I was sitting. And uh, I was watching Hunt for Red October, a film I always love to come mm-hmm. back to. I really enjoy. And I started no- noticing that all the scenes with Sean Connery's character, uh, Re- uh, Ramus, um, ha- have blue everywhere, blue lights in the background, blue windows, blue reflections everywhere. And every time they press a button, it's a blue light. And then they go back over to Alec Baldwin and Scott Glenn, and they're surrounded with red, and everyone's got red on their face and so on. And I'm just sitting there staring at the movie, enjoying the movie like you do. But sometimes you have to kind of open your eyes and realize, hold on. I'm looking at blue, red, blue, red, blue, red going on. I could use this, you know. So quite often the ideas are right there. And you just have to reach out and grab them. And then Um, you married them to the Elmer Bernstein music, which was. Yes. I think it's the Cape Fear theme and and the other one which i didn't know but i believe was him as well yes it, it, well originally it was bernard herman who did the first cape fear back in oh, the okay in the, yeah in the 60s the late 50s or 60s and then elmer bernstein got in did a, a re interpretation which is i would i think it's fair to say that it's a lot more it's even more dramatic than the yes. than the bernard herman one it's slower. It's even scarier. It's a scary piece of music. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was great to use that. In fact, if you take a look at that opening, the opening scenes in that move in the sorry the uh, in the video, and then you go and look at the opening scenes of Cape Fear, I've kind of plagiarized the format. Mm-hmm. So I have a kind of a dreamy odd intro. And then it kind of settles down to me talking. And of course, in Cape Fear, it settles down to um, what's that young, young actress? She plays the daughter. Juliet Lewis. Juliet Lewis, thank you. Yes, sure. And uh, yeah, and, and then, you know, she makes a, a little statement there about summer coming to an end and Cape Fear, the river. And then that, you know, terrifying trombone comes in. And of course, in Cape Fear, you see religious images on the wall of Robert De Niro's, Max Cady's uh, cell. 
Yes. And then pans out to Max Keady there doing his push-ups or whatever. Um, if you look at my video, I go to religious images and I, there's statues on top of churches. And, and then instead of Max Cady, it's the Pepsi watch. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm borrowing, uh, you know, the format that, was, that Martin Scorsese so brilliantly put together. It's a great and, person to borrow from, I mean, truly. Yeah, I mean, in homage, of course. It's sure. like, what, what, a, what a brilliant format that you put together. I also at a certain point there's uh, some fireworks and if you remember in cape yeah. fear there there's there's a scene with crazy fireworks outside the guy's home nick nolte's home and you know max katie's sitting on the on the wall with the fireworks behind him it, a completely senseless scene but for some reason has a you know a terrifying image yeah you don't know who the hell is setting off the fireworks but for some reason it has a visual impact so I just I there are fireworks that happened down the street from from me uh, during last summer, and I filmed them on my phone. Uh-huh. And I was going through I was going through my phone once again. You've got to spot when the ideas are there in front of you. I'm going through my phone, looking at videos and images. I think I was searching for some old picture of a watch, probably you know, mm-hmm. for knowing me. And then I come across those those shots, and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember those fireworks. That was a lovely fireworks show. And I find one, and it's blue and red. The perfect you know, color, God, too. Oh it fit in perfect. I thought it was recent in watching the clip. It's amazing you were able to key it back into that. It's That was over a year ago. Yeah, impressive. Do you, do you archive your clips? Because, like, I personally, I don't know if it's the editing software I use, but my seven-minute videos sometimes create, like, 200 gigs of material. And then when I'm done, I just delete it all. I consider it as ephemeral and I might keep a shot here or there that's extraordinary, but then mm-hmm. the rest of it, I just wipe it's creative destruction. I keep moving. Do you have like hard disks of clips? Yeah, I stacks of hard drives. Yeah. Once, wow. once the project is done, first of all, when you, when you watch a, maybe a 10 minute video, uh, especially if it's one of the RT style videos, you're probably looking at about, 10 percent of the shots or even less of the shots that were actually taken maybe even five percent of the shots that were taken there's a lot of other shots some of course unusable some not as interesting and then some absolutely magic shots but just somehow they wound up on the cutting room floor Mm. they just couldn't make the cut in the end so what i do is once i'm finished with the project then that huge folder which can be up to a terabyte in size sometimes gets dragged onto external hard drives and then put away and that way whenever i'm you know going through some some video and i'm thinking where do i go from here or what do i need here and then i think you know what would be great if is if i had a shot of maybe a kid running running across a laneway or a um uh, i don't know a, a, a pigeon landing on a table or so, something I go, I think I have one of those. And then I start pulling out the hard drives and scouring through until I find something like that, you know? Oh, sure. So it's a, it's a really good idea to, to hang on to all the old clips. I'll tell you one, some clips that I, that I do actually dump. When I'm speaking camera, when I'm doing the talking head part, quite often I have to do it 15, 20 times before I get a take that I'm happy with. Those earlier takes, they can go in the bin. Like, I don't yeah, need yeah. to hang on to those. You know, I'll hang on to the good one. Well, one yeah. of the things I, I really respect, too, is when you're on camera, you're not necessarily the star of your own videos. It, you kind of mm. take your ego out of it. It seems like, and, and correct me if I go wrong, it seems like you have this idea for a video and it starts to take form, and part of it is you. But sometimes the watch is the main attraction, or sometimes it's the music. I think recently your video on time and the nature of time had that awesome Battlestar Galactica theme that you recomposed um, yes. brilliantly. I, I wish I had that talent. I was really impressed with all of that and following along. And and I think I, I like as an artist, you take your ego out of it. That, thanks. Yeah, I, I see myself as just a character in the in the movie. I'm just yeah. I'm just I'm just playing a character. Uh, I'm I'm on the screen as one as if somebody else is making it, and honestly, that's the way I continue even through the editing process. You know, I can labor over a shot or a scene or whatever 
a lot and think it's great. But when I get to editing, it's like I, I have amnesia and I turn into just the editor and I edit. If you were in the room, you'd probably be laughing because I'd be like, oh, that was awful. What's the hell's wrong with this guy? Why can't he say that bloody word correctly? Where, is there a take where he says it correctly? What am I going to do with How am I going to make a good edit? Of you know, I'm actually kind of shouting at this other guy who I think, you know, I'm making fun <laughs> of him, probably as it happens in, in a real editing room where they go, you know, oh God, is this guy ever going to get this line right? Where's the take that we, what can we do and splice it together? Whereas I'm actually talking about myself, but you know, yeah. it's in yeah. a third party. I've, I've dropped that, um, I've dropped that those clothes and, and yeah. put on the new new suit now as an editor. Uh, I learned that the hard way in, in music that quite often you can slave over a song or a part to a song or some arrangement, and then later you want to use it because you know how long it took you to do it to mm -hmm. make it. But the truth is that an editor will say or a mixer will say, "It's no use. We're cutting it." And um, they can be very uh, ruthless and mercenary about it, but unfortunately, they are closer to the than the original than the original musician is, or the listener in this case. Um, so they know best. Oh yeah, you know? that's part of the band dynamic too, right? I mean, that probably tears apart certain bands. I mean, you'd know this better than I. Somebody, mm -hmm. oh, I got this great guitar piece and they want to throw it in. It's two minutes long. It doesn't fit. And it's like, come on, you know, you don't need the show off. Just let's do it for the song. So you're doing it for the song. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. You know, again, you know, I could have, you know, there. sometimes you're, you, you, you put the camera down on the watch and you, you get an amazing shot in a minute that winds up in the in the in the, in the cut in the end um and then sometimes you're there for a couple of hours trying to get trying to get a shot and then you wind up with tons and tons of footage from that those few hours there trying to get a shot and in the end none of it's usable oh, yeah. and if you're a little too married to all the effort you put in you might insist on putting something in and go no god damn it i want that in because you know i was there in the rain for you know it was cold that day and my legs were hurting but the truth is as the editor then you have to say no it's not working it's going in the trash you know and you uh, know one thing like sometimes if i don't get a line right i'll cut it up and then i'll just yes. slather it over with b-roll so you can't see how horrifically I, cut it is. i do i do that constantly constantly yeah, you, you you think I'm able to recite these things off yeah, beautifully from the start to finish, but, but I nice. don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I mess it up all the time, but it's all smoke and mirrors, like tricks that you do later then for continuity. Very well done. And what are you actually nice. editing on? What is the software you're using? I'm using Final Cut Pro. So you are. The, that's the same thing I use. Okay, I was surprised. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, look, I'm a music guy, so you know, I'm in. Uh, using a program called Logic and Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. So Logic I would use for composition, and I use Pro Tools then for mixing. Pro Tools is kind of where I began uh, with music mixing. Uh, so video was not my thing for a very, very long time. I kind of mm -hmm. came into it late. Yeah, tell and... me how you learned that. That was another one of my questions I had queued up, so you might as well work that in now. How I learned Final Cut Pro? Yeah, how you learned editing. Did you do it by... Um, trial and error. I think your daughter does video editing too. Was she a help? Like, you know, did you use YouTube resources? Like, what was your path? Um, my daughter does do editing. Sorry, I put some light on the situation there. My oh, help the camera. There you go. <laughs> my daughter um, does do editing. Uh, she never helps me with editing in any way. And she, she wouldn't dare. She yeah. knows her pressure. How precious I am with my edit, with my edits, excuse me, <clears throat> and um, but she has helped me shoot some of the videos. We haven't worked together now in quite some time, but she has helped me shoot uh, some of the earlier videos. Got some great footage, um, well, and of course with a very different feel, which is mm -hmm. nice to, to put that in there. Was it um, the travel yeah. stuff? Because you used to do a lot more like travel videos and. Seems like there was yes. an evolution from travel into more high ideas. As a yeah, 
yeah the travel stuff is still something that in my mind is a thing is a feature of the channel but unfortunately you know things came to a halt with with uh covid and lockdowns uh so it was it was literally impossible to travel and that kind of put a dampener on that it was also it was a huge endeavor you know to take you know hard drives and lenses and all sorts of, sort of batteries and so on off to some remote location Mm. shoot the hell out of that place and then come home with all of that gear and exhausted because you, oh, yeah. you basically tra- traipsed around the entire town 400 times and then begin the grueling task of going through all the footage and seeing how you can put together a narrative it was really taking a lot out of me it's not like i've dropped it but i mean for example right now that i'm in uh, lisbon or i'm in just outside of Lisbon in Portugal, I do intend, I brought some gear with me and I do intend taking some footage and I'll probably put together a Portugal video out of this. And I hope that's a gateway now to doing more of that stuff, kind of stuff again. But yes, my daughter was doing, uh, she was helping me specifically on uh, the Verona video, the Cortina video in a heavy way. Excuse me. And, And then what else was there? One of the Venice videos, I think. Oh, okay. yeah. I remember yeah, yeah. You, you have one shot with the Seiko Alpine where it sort yes. of melted into the snow over mm. time. And that was one of the perfect shots that I've seen in any watch video ever. It, it stuck with me. Well, what, what happened was um, I was putting down the watch as I would on a desk or on a table at a restaurant or, or anywhere. But I was putting it down on snow and then I was filming. But what I noticed was the watch was not as cold as the snow, even <laughs> even though the watches were getting it was getting very cold and picking up that watch and putting it back on my wrist sometimes was painful because it was getting ice cold, you know, Oh yeah. but it wasn't as cold as the snow. So what it was doing, it was melting the snow around it. So the shot was changing. Now, I wasn't noticing it as much as when I was doing it because it was a slow process. But then fast forward a couple of weeks later and I'm deep in the edit and I'm going through those um, sections, I'm noticing as I scrub through very quickly that the watch is gone, is <laughs> sinking down into the snow. It so I start great. going through, yeah, it was great. So I, I start going through all the shots and they are, they're all doing the same thing. They're all, it's all melting. So I start showing the watches of melting in all these different positions. And it just turned out to be somehow an effective image. I'm not sure what that's supposed to represent. It made the, the watch seem hot. more robust. It made the watch seem a little no. bit more adventurous and edgy. And it also made the environment seem a little bit more exotic. That's interesting, yeah. If you don't mind. That's great. Saying. No, that's great. That's great to hear how, how that was interpreted. You know, I, I guess that's another great thing that people can take something out of it that maybe you might be aware of. Yeah. That happens in the yeah. music industry too. You write a song about one thing, maybe the audience, everyone in the audience, they have their own interpretation in their mind about what you're talking about. And sometimes as a songwriter, you have to keep your mouth shut and not tell anyone what it's really about because that might disappoint them. They've, they've created a whole thing inside their own minds about what you, what you meant, and it means a lot to them. It can lose you know, the speak. Yeah, yeah. So... When I saw those melting scenes, I thought, uh, I guess it makes the watch look a little alive. Yes. Like, yes. like it's, al- it's, it. mo- it's moving by itself somehow. Mm-hmm. But uh, whatever it was, it was um, it matched up with the music. So I used it. So, so then in the editing, it was more trial and error on your part, or you want to do a certain shot, so you go find out how to do it. A little bit of everything. Yeah, it's it's you know, want to do a certain shot, and you start trying to figure out what to do. Sometimes you make a mistake, and that mistake looks great. It's a happy accident, is yes. what I call it. And you're just like, you know what? That's better than the thing I was trying to get in the first place. I'm going to keep that now. Just keep your eyes open. <laughs> just just stay aware of what's going on because you again, you might be going, no, I really want this idea. And you could be missing all sorts of beautiful little other things that are happening uh, by accident. Just be be ready to pick up the pieces, the accidents, the happy accidents, 
when they occur and if they occur. Okay. So, um, but getting back to your question about how I learned Final Cut Pro, I learned it with the band years ago because I was trying to put together little videos for for our band. And uh, I, I thought I could put compos compositional stuff together where I saw a lot of bands uh, were doing what, what are known as lyric videos. So it's the, it's the song and the lyrics are kind of animated on the screen. It's a cheap way of putting out a video, honestly. And you get to read the lyrics while you're listening to the song. That way you don't have to pay actors. You don't have to pay lighting people. You don't have to get in and make some big, huge production. You can just get the video out there. Well, I thought, well, I can get in and use clips and things like this and, and uh, match things up that are theme, uh, matching with the theme of the song. And it'll give people something to watch as they listen to the song. Because in my experience, when I would listen to music uh, growing up with my headphones on as I was on, you know, taking the bus to school or whatever, wherever I was going or later taking the the subway around new york um what would happen is i would invent like images in my mind as i was listening to the music i would create my own little music video inside my head imaginary music video i think a lot of people do that but what are their eyes seeing they're just seeing the subway <laughs> they're seeing the bus or they're seeing they're seeing non-related things so it, sometimes it helps to experience music because your eyes are given something to do. Mm. <laughs> and just to put it in a really harsh way, give your eyes something to, like there's a lot of people who come to me saying that, I, that the channel has gotten them into classical music, that they never liked classical music before, but they love watches. Oh, okay. And they love the composition. And then, and now they're like, I love that classical piece now. But mm -hmm. what happened? What happened? They were just finally given a, a way to actually enjoy the piece of music without getting bored, oh, yeah. um, holding their interest because their eyes have something to watch. Their eyes are very interested. They want to see the beautiful watches and the beautiful places. And the music is going along with that. And then when they hear that piece of music, it reminds them them of the video they like or the watch they like so now they like classical music oh, all great. of a sudden Passion yeah which is that. great that's probably my favorite thing about the channel if i've done anything like that that that's a great thing i'm, I'm delighted right right well, yeah which is a big part of, of what you say because you're always sharing little tidbits of, of knowledge with people be it music food style i mean you do cover quite a bit under the umbrella i try to do the same i always say like from a pen is everything because you're yes. making like making a mark writing something is sort of a, a primary thing and you could extrapolate out so so it's it's pretty good do you ever start with a song is it ever music first great question i'm sure it has happened yeah i'm sure it has that the song I just know that it belongs somewhere on some video and I go mm -hmm. look and yeah, I, I think it, it doesn't happen often, but yes, I think it probably has happened once or twice. Yeah. Okay. But just the idea of the song. Um, the Battlestar Galactica was close. I think you had the idea of time first and then you thought mm -hmm. of the ticking and then it went to that interesting rhythm, but you could have yeah. just as easily started with that song and then worked it. The other way, excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I could have heard that music and thought, you know, wouldn't that be a great thing to use on a video? Um, I think recently I did a video of my, just like a little synopsis of my visit to Geneva, the Watches and Wonders thing. And I pretty much, there's, I'm not speaking in it at all. There's no talking. There's no dialogue whatsoever. It's just a very uh, frenzied cut of that particular weekend. And I use that jigsaw falling into place, the Radiohead song. And it just works. It's just like, it's like, it's a music video for the song. Oh, yeah. you did <laughs> An that. alternative music video for the song. Yeah, you did that. I forget who it was that you went shopping for watches with in Venice. And it had that, I, I don't know the pop song, but she was mm -hmm. frolicking and she had a lot of personality. And the clip yes. worked really well. 
and really brought out her personality. I think you really made her look really good in that, you know, really interesting. It probably helped her. Yeah, because, yeah, it was a popular uh, song on the radio at the time. Oh, okay. It was called About, About Damn Time by right. Lizzo. And, and it was on the radio a lot. Sure. And actually, it was on the radio while we were shooting. We went into a bar at one point and uh while we while we were just you know chatting away there and getting ready to head elsewhere to check the other watch stores and stuff that was on in the background and mm. she was frolicking a little bit dancing and being very flirtatious with the camera yes. very natural at it so when i went back through the footage again of course this song i can hear in the background in the in the footage so of course like i'm like well that matches her you know i mean she's 25 years old you know mm -hmm. so i'm gonna i'm gonna use music that 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 matches what you're seeing you're seeing a young young lady who probably really likes that song and dances to that song rather than uh, of course the juxtaposition of course is that i started out with a very old traditional song that was used on a woody allen movie and so on so you're not looking at you know it's, i've given you a totally different way of seeing the exact same person in an old fashioned place, they're pouring tea out of silverware and oh, yes. looking at gold watches and so on. So well, you're seeing you exactly the dynamic, thing. right? It's almost like Led Zeppelin yeah. for the hills and far, far away. You have the acoustic and then it explodes and then it goes back to acoustic. Don't give me more ideas, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm here for. My time is about, you know, inspiring too. So. <laughs> no, that's a good one. <laughs> you never know. You might see that one pop up at some point in the future. Yeah, you see it. So how much is yours, would you say, scripted versus unscripted? Uh, for the narration, you mean? Just in general. I mean, do you sometimes do things off the cuff or are you sitting there at your computer writing copy? I don't ever write copy. Okay. It's all, it's all off the cuff. Oh, okay. Even, even the deep lying in bed. Um, so those those moments are, are normally, normally I'll come up with the idea, and if I come if I come up with a good line, and I don't want to forget it, I'll get in and write write it down in notes, and sure. I'll refer to those notes then when I when the time comes, but more often than not. I'm just thinking about the thing I need to say, and I just say it in different ways, naturally, mm -hmm. into the microphone. And I wind up with, you know, I need two minutes of of dialogue, of, of monologue, and I've got, you know, 26 minutes to cut through, just to refine it down to those perfect, those perfect little moments. Quite often, you think uh it, it it can happen so often that you have a kind of a narrative you're speaking and there's plenty of words if you will there's sentences and if, as you strip them away and you remove remove them and bring them to fewer and fewer get to the they tend to have more effect yeah, yeah they tend to have more effect you know the bogart audience is so famously humphrey bogart would take his scripts and he'd say i'm not saying that he wouldn't say that yeah, and he was he, remove, so he could get away with it. Yeah, sure. That's brilliant. Um, so, yeah, I think it's important to keep in mind that your audience is very smart. Right. You know, your audience is very, very smart. They don't need their hands held time. Sometimes it helps, especially if you're doing something very technical. You're explaining something scientific, which I do from time to time in the videos. So sometimes you have to be a little fair and, and, and give people a chance to catch up what, what on earth you're trying to explain. But, but most of the time, I'd say nine times out of 10, their mind is working way faster than you're speaking and way faster than the images are portraying. So you have to give your audience a little credit and realize that they're probably gonna fill in the gaps that you left in there and they're going to come to conclusions uh by themselves mm -hmm. you know you gotta mm -hmm. keep that in mind yeah no that, that makes a lot of sense and i've noticed and correct me if i'm wrong 
it seems like you don't have a time constraint because many of your videos are not dialogue heavy. I think the one about time was, but we'll take the one you just posted on the Pepsi. Yes. You, you probably had 10 lines in that video, or, or at least it felt like it. It was very visually um, driven, whereas some of your other ones are a little more didactic, like the one on, on time. So do you, you just allow it to have the time it needs to breathe? Yeah, you got to feel it out. That's a perfect example, that latest one is you know there was a lot more monologue mm. originally and it just wasn't working the, the music was slow and drawn out and tiring and uh, spooky mm. and the images were all slowed down to very low frame rate and everybody's moving very slowly and mm. it kind of creates this dream state oh sure and i realized that the video is more like a bad dream that that video isn't really informative. A lot of comments already on it. There are people going, so did you buy the watch in the AD or what? Like, let's tell me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, it's not the it's point. Not, you, missed, you missed the point. Right. It's, about ha it's about having this terrible dream about this thing you've been obsessed with for a long time. Yeah. And you, in some ways, even fear. And then that, you, that thing manifests itself into reality. And then you look down in your wrist and you and sure, you've got a gorgeous watch on, and you've got a coveted watch on, and a watch that's worth a lot of money. And but also, you're looking down at something that reminds you of bad thoughts or uncomfortable moments. And so the the video wound up being way too dreamy and mm -hmm. way too uh, way too abstract for me to be there chatting away normally or at oh, okay. any sort of regular pace. So I you feel like, like it was a success though, right? I mean, do you feel, Yeah. okay, because this was actually one of my questions. Like, do you feel that you get to say what you want to say in your videos and would you release it if you didn't, if it was still good? Uh, man, these questions are really good. If, if, if all the interviewers had your kind of questions, man, this is, these, these are wonderful questions. This is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know what? That is an interesting one because quite often, well, I won't say quite often, but it, it can happen. You don't get to put in all the info you'd like to convey. Sure. And maybe a couple of important messages wind up getting dropped for the sake of the video being good, for the sake of the video working. I would have sp spared myself a large headache in the comments if I just put in the fact that I did not buy that watch from the authorized dealer I bought at gray market for roughly double its recommended retail price. Uh, but had I said that, that's, it's such a sober and awake thing to say, it would have yeah. killed the mood it of the rest would. of the video. It's, yeah, it's too much of reality in a movie, a movie, in a video that's about feeling and, and your interaction. And I think that's what makes your channel really valuable is you're not afraid to put yourself out there. And I think that we all sort of hide there. There's two types of artists. If you'll allow me this, if we can put people in this categories, there's people who sure. create to hide who they are. And then there's people who, that are, that are confessing who they yeah. are. So would you put yourself in the ladder if we would accept those categories? Um, again, really good question, but what I'm doing in the, in those videos, and I did it in the Panerai video, uh, there was a, oh, two years ago, over a year and a half ago at this point, I don't know if you saw that one, the power of the dark side, I'm which sure is a I similar, did. yeah, it's a similar video. It's very music driven, image driven, and it has the narration and it's just just verging on corny and silly and comedy almost but people really 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 you know they love it they 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 watch it like a music video and they they quote every line that i say there's a few lines in there in particular that they love to keep repeating and doing in those videos including the one from last night and there's a few others um there was a recent uh, grand seiko one as well with some heavy metal music and stuff oh, and yeah. I'm, yeah i saw that I'm, yeah, I'm threatening. I'm threatening the audience to keep their to keep it quiet. You know, don't tell anybody about this, or we're coming for you. 
and it's kind of a it's kind of ridiculous kind of video. What I'm doing there is the same thing as whew, I'll give you an example. Uh, Peter Gabriel, right? So mm -hmm. you know, on some of his earlier albums, he would write song. He has a song called "The Intruder," for example. Okay. And he says things like, "I like opening windows and doors. I like creeping across creaky wooden floors. I like the set the sense of anticipation when you know I'm there but you can't see me." He says all these things. Mm -hmm. Do we think that Peter Gabriel likes to do those things? Mm -hmm. No. No, he's no. pretending he's, he's pretending he's the intruder he's like i am the intruder he's, he's exploring the mind of a person who creeps into people's houses you know or a serial killer or something like that mm -hmm. uh he's he's exploring that and he's it's a trick he's pretending to be this other person taking on and, a persona yeah you're taking it you know when we see when we Hey, when we see Anthony Hopkins portray Hannibal Lecter, we don't think that Anthony Hopkins does those things. No. We, see, we know he's exploring the idea. Sure. If he spoke to you like, like that in real life, you'd think he was out of his mind. But because of the suspended disbelief and the setting and you know him in the prison cell and the music in the background, now we're inside the thing. So you know when I'm doing those narratives, it's not that it's me, it's me kind of just acting as a guy mm -hmm. who's lost his mind because he got so obsessed with a watch that it kind of drove him a little crazy. Sure. And I think that some people might look at it and go, you know what, I, okay, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't that bad, but I know where he's coming from because that watch haunted my dreams too a little bit because no one can get it, certainly mm -hmm. not at retail. And, uh, you know, it's the unobtainium yes. and it's out there. And, you know, when you see some of the hobbies looks... are, 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 are sort of void by obsession. <laughs> yeah. 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 A, yeah. Obsession is exactly what it is. It's like, think of all those young kids buying uh, Taylor Swift tickets. Oh, yeah. Recently yeah for that, for that. Night, three hours in the rain with like. I think there was something like another 15,000 in the parking lot listening. That's Just listening. Power. Now, you can imagine those young girls when they, when they did manage to get their ticket or it came in the mail or whatever. Oh, yeah. You can imagine them trembling with that thing in their hand. Oh, oh yeah. this is a piece of paper and all she is is, is a singer. Right. Well, the, it's the association. It's the connection they have with it. So um, true, true. I just... Very it's 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 true that in in the watch world some watches just they're very elusive mm -hmm. and they're a little almost frightening because it's like oh there it is you know i don't know about you but i don't i don't think i've ever seen a a blr blro pepsi on the jubilee in the shop when in the store window no you know you sometimes you see watches that are on a unobtainable you can't buy them i don't i can't think of any times i've even seen that one in the window i know they're never going to sell it to me but even see it on display i haven't I've never so seen it is kind of how did i think about it yeah right <laughs> yeah so so there's there's a lot to be said for the kind of the un the unexplained and the unseen you know going back to great directors and not to compare myself with these brilliant geniuses i'm I'm just inspired by by their genius, yeah. but like let's say Francis Ford Coppola with Apocalypse Now. Most of the film you don't see Colonel Kurtz. Yeah. You know he's there, he's out there, and you you, you hear letters being read that mm -hmm. he had sent, and it all it does is build up so that when you finally see the guy in the final fifteen minutes of the film, you're absolutely transfixed. Like Harry Lyme. Uh, Right. Yeah, another great uh, figure in the Third Man, one of, yeah. probably my favorite movie. Really? Wow. Apocalypse Now is in my top five, so you're you're right in my area right now. Okay, <laughs> and that's just that's great. You know, that's great storytelling. Sure. You know, I I I saw it again with that um, Ben Kingsley film, Sexy Beast, mm -hmm. uh, with Don Don Logan, and he doesn't show up until halfway through the film, but but he's there. Right. He's in the film. He's just we can't see him yet. <coughs> so excuse me. So by the time 
we see him, my, it's like we already know him. Yes. And we're a little bit terrified, you know? So, you know, these are the types of storytellers that I'm inspired by when you can do something like that. I can tell everybody in the audience uh, how the Rolex Pepsi wears, how it feels, the dimensions, the lug width, <laughs> and all of those things. But I think lots of other channels have already done that and probably done it way better than I could. Or, or just done the I'm talk I agree. You know, and similarly, you know, my channel, people in pen world, they'll talk about how long it is, how much it weighs, this and that. But I like to talk yes. like, who are you when you write with it? Like, what there does it you do? Go. Yes. It's a different there question. There you go. But it's it's as much there. Mm. It's as much there. It's as much part of it. Just because you can't see it, it's 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 doesn't mean it's not there. It's like gravity or time. You can't see it or hold it or grab it or stick it in a bag and run away with it. But we all know it's there. So these are the things that I try to touch off on the channel. Because again, plenty of other channels are doing the other stuff really, really well. So they don't need another guy to tell them, you know, the lug width or whatever. That, right. You know, and, and why would I waste my time? I have way more fun doing the other stuff. It's way more interesting. I get to use a lot of music, which is my favorite thing in the world. And luckily, I have, I'm surrounded by beauty where I live, and I'm able to capture yes. great moments, you know. Venice is a character unto itself in your videos. It is. I mean, you point a camera at a gondola passing, <laughs> you know, and, and, and you just, you can't go wrong. You know, you shoot it in high frame rate, you slow it down and all of a sudden it looks like poetry. Oh, yeah. And all it is is a guy working. That's all he's doing. He's just working. That's but it I'm has doing. a, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got a lot it's of associations got, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that's, that, that's where I like to go. Now, of course, the channel has other things. It has comedy in there. It has, but Lenny, we haven't know, seen it, him in a while. We haven't seen Lenny in a while. You I know, should say her because we never get to see him. We just hear him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so he's got to come back. And, you know, and then, of course, I do my live streams on the mm -hmm. Friday night and the Saturday night. And they're very, very different things. Uh, yeah, I enjoy this. But, I heard you speaking a little bit about Fountain Pen World saying, oh, they probably all hate each other over there, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the same kind of drama. In that, in yeah, that world, I mean, yeah. not quite as much. Um, it's it's very kind and gentle over here. People are lovely, but, you know, occasionally there's there's contretemps that go on. I just, I, I'm, sh I'm sure there is. By the way, I, I've just, I've been using this pen as my friend um, yes. makes pens, Carolyn Martin, and I've really enjoyed filming um you know, I always like a new challenge and I enjoyed filming writing. Now I'm just, uh -huh. I was just writing gibberish because okay. the camera, the camera angle was so low and so close to the, my fingertips and, and the, and the, and the writing instrument that you can't really see what I'm writing. So it didn't really matter. And I just found it was real fun to be able to kind of scribble and write and like write my name and doodle. Yeah. And then slow it all down and get this kind of this this nice um, this kind of dramatic look because of course mm -hmm. that that what we're looking at there or even more interestingly from this angle mm -hmm. I can't get it right everything's backwards yeah, it's something we've been looking at for centuries you know that is a thing that we've been looking at for such a long time absolutely. You know, it's a, and it's a beautiful shape and a beautiful form. Mm. And of course, then you wonder what's been written on the page and how important is it? Do you write to, in cursive, uh, Machine? Uh, I do write in cursive. Yes, I do. Uh, and what's your so, friend's company again? I want to make sure that people heard that. Well, we, we can put it in the description too. Yeah, she's a big supporter of the channel and uh, she makes her own. Pens. The company is RGC Penmakers. RGC Penmakers. Excellent. Now she does make. She does. This is a ballpoint, but she does also make fountain pens. Yeah, and I'm trying to get made, you there. I'm trying to get you into. That. Yeah, yeah. You'll get. You'll get me there. I'll. I'll go. I'll go there for sure. But uh, yeah, she sent me a couple of these, and they're just wonderful. Beautiful. I love carrying this. This. Yeah, it's a beautifully made pen. 
I love carrying this around with me. It's just a lovely feeling when somebody asks you to sign. We yes. checked into the hotel earlier this evening and they said, sir, would you sign this? And they handed me a pen, just a little crappy pen. It feels and like I a said, noodle sure. pen like that. I, no, but I said, this is just a great moment that I really enjoyed. <laughs> I said, I said, sure. And I just did, I ignored the pen that they put in front of me yep. and I just reached inside and pulled out my pen nice. and, and, you know, and then back like in that. and I just said, ah, oh, that's a beautiful moment right there. Heavenly light following it. Yeah, yes. Just love, uh, you know, it just, it's, it feels so much nicer to, for, for a man to have or a man, a woman to mm -hmm. have their own pen. Sure. You know, that represents them a bit like your own watch uh, or your own car or something like that. So uh, it's it's a wonderful thing. I know I should say writing instrument more than pen. No, you can but say anyway, we're, we're pen. We're okay, pen. okay. I'll, you know? I'm always going to slip yeah. up on that. I always will. No, but, no, we um, say too. One interesting thing about Carolyn as well is now she's making watch-themed pen, oh, uh, writing cool. instrument. Yes, yeah, so she started started on the easy stuff with the moon swatch, you know, the Neptune and the planet Earth and so on. The watch with the same coloring and the same design that can go along, or excuse me, the writing instrument that can go along with the watch, which I think is great. And I, I'm looking forward to her making like the Speedmaster or the Submariner or whatever that can go along with, uh, so you can match your, you can have your, your watch. I was just thinking that they would look great and frame together. You know, yes. what I, enjoy, I shoot writing low on my channel. I mean, I do it overhead sometimes, but it's really not an interesting angle. I think uh -huh. down low and somewhat wide. And if you can see the line as you get to the end of it, it, it makes it a little bit more compelling. And sometimes you can see the ink glistening, which is nice. Oh, wow. I'd love to. Yeah. Well, you're giving me ideas now. Okay. Yeah. If I can get it at an angle that the sun is over there cameras over here and the pens in between maybe i can catch actually some of the sunlight glisten off the ink as it goes off onto the paper that that's yeah. a great idea oh that's great yeah i always like a new challenge like how to how to shoot things in a new way um my friend who's with me here in um in portugal she's going to be playing tennis tomorrow she's a great tennis player Mm. I'm no good at I'm no good at tennis, but yeah, but she's like, you can film me if you want. It will probably make for good filming. And I said, you know what? I'm definitely going to do that because I've never, I, so far, I've never filmed anyone in sports, and that's going to be a new challenge now. Yeah. How am I going to get the right angles? How am I going to make that's it a look nice good? Beat. You could probably work it into something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Um, you know, these are all good, fun <laughs> challenges, new things, new ideas, you know. Absolutely. Now, now, I want to ask you, we're, we're just about at an hour, so I don't want to wear you out, but I do have some more questions. Are you okay forging ahead or are you getting tired? I mean, we can, no, we can pick up the no, pace. Um, no, I'm good. We we have dinner in 25 minutes and it's okay. just, a, just around the corner, so we're only, you know, five minutes away. So okay. I think I've got another good... 10 minutes in me. If you okay, so we'll, get, we'll, we'll try to get through some stuff fast that I think you'll enjoy. And sure. um, I'm going to hit you kind of like a lightning round, you know. What mm -hmm. do you think is is people's biggest misconception of you? Me Of me? Personally, yeah. Uh, oh, um, <laughs> uh, people watching on the, yeah. watching the channel, you mean? Um, I think a lot of people think that I'm a very arrogant person. Yeah. Yeah, they think I'm uh, yeah, self-oriented or arrogant or narcissistic person. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think you're someone who's kind of looking to make connections, and I think you have a little bit of a gruff exterior, which is like armor, you know. And you can, you're mm. obviously a very sensitive guy. Your artistic sensibilities are just so well tuned, and I, I personally, I just feel like it's you're looking for connection, and maybe you're a little guarded. If I can psychoanalyze you for a minute. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's probably a very good uh, uh, analysis. Yeah, I, hey, yeah, could yeah. be true. Is yeah. there a part of you that you would like to get out there more? Is there something you'd like to say more consistently and get out there? I'd like to do more comedy. You know, when oh, people say, okay. hey, where's, where's Lenny? We miss Lenny. 
I kind of think, oh, yeah, I should be doing a lot more of that because it really is a big, very big part of me. And, uh, you know, quite often I can get bogged down with serious stuff on the channel and get very heavy and get very abstract. And there's a lot of drama in some of the episodes. So I like to, to do the drama thing. But uh, people who know me personally in my personal life know a, know a person who's pretty much never being serious and always cracking a joke and and, mm. and being kind of silly and stuff. Sure. And Lenny is silly, and um, the Watchfinder parody video was silly. And I like being silly, you know. I like doing silly yeah, stuff and yeah, being yeah. funny. So you know. I don't know, somewhere in the back of my head, I think, you know, I should maybe drop the, all the serious stuff and just do funny stuff. And, and just, uh, because al also I find that that skips over the previous thing we were just mentioning. People thinking that I'm some, some sort of self-absorbed person. When you're just being funny and you're doing wisecracks and stuff, everybody likes you, you know? Yeah. No, nobody writes a bad comment under the Lenny and funny stuff and the, and the parody stuff. Because everybody had a chuckle, everybody had a laugh, and all of a sudden you're everybody's friend then, and then they don't have any judgment on your character. So I'd probably spare myself a lot of a lot of uh, pain there if I just yeah. just laugh. You're gonna at stay it. out of the comments section. I mean, you know, that's rule number one. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Yep. So quickly, how do you refresh your well of creativity? Whew. Um, I'm not sure I do, do mm. I? It's I'm just not, always I'm not sure if, if I do that. I mean, sometimes it comes to, to a halt. Honestly, what happens is usually when you get to do a video, you wind up so exhausted mm. when you finish a good video, especially a good video that takes a lot of work and research and, and, and a hell of a lot of editing and trial and error and like redoing and redoing. Um, quite often when you finally post that video, you're so, you're so burnt out. Mm. <laughs> you just don't want to do, you don't want to do anything for a couple of days. You got to go off and just recharge the batteries. I do easy ones afterwards. When I do something really taxing, my next one is hands, hands on a table. Yeah, and maybe I do. Maybe my yeah, maybe I do that too. Actually, now I think about it, I probably do. He needs a drink and mm -hmm. SWAT and those live streams that are just me sitting there talking that doesn't require any editing or anything. Uh, that's probably yeah, me recharging the batteries. At least then I'm still present. I'm still putting out some sort of content uh, rather than just disappearing for months on end and then putting mm -hmm. out one video every six weeks or eight weeks or something sure well i mean they take time and you're obviously a perfectionist i was going to ask that question but it was obvious so you know you don't release something if it's not at a certain level so well you know you can you can print a video and it takes a long time to print there's so much editing in there and everything and you reckon it's finished and then you know you watch it back and you realize there's just a tiny little thing in there <laughs> And you know you're never, you won't you won't get any sleep if you don't go yeah. back and fix it and then do it again. The so worst quite part often is when it's up, right? Have you ever had something up? And it's well, when it's all it's ghost, happened to me once. Yeah, it, you know, I just there. pulled it down. I pulled it down. Yeah, yeah, funny. yeah. That's the worst. It's already out there. People are already watching it. What are you going to do? Repost it? And, you know. So so normally I'll print a video eight or ten times to get it absolutely right and make sure all the because for me, it's all about the small details. Yes. You know, it's the small details that really make the difference between the video being good and the video being great. Yep. Yep, indeed. Truly. And I'm keeping an eye on the time. So I'm just going to say one last thing that was going to be a question, but I'm just going to say it as a comment. I noticed sure. the theme of food in your videos. It seems very powerful. And I don't even know if you notice it as much, but you're always going hmm. to like waiters and you're, even the way you dis, you talk about your videos, you're saying this is like a palate cleanser. And and yeah. it's very much like Revolve. And it seems that food and sitting down, kind of sharing food, if not with people outside or, or people immediately, then certainly with the rest of the world through your videos seems like something that's important to you. 
Once again, man, you're psychoanalyzing me. You're telling me things I've never even thought about. Uh, when I say things like palate cleanser, I'm always using metaphors and analogies. Yes, but it goes to food. That's telling, you know? Yeah, yeah, food, yeah. And it made me think of like, it. yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead. You have to process it. It has to, mm -hmm. food, food, I used to use a food analogy years ago with, uh, with, with computers because I was very involved in computer science. And um, people would say to me, you know, I put more memory in my computer, more RAM, random access memory. I would put more, of the, I put more of that in my machine, but my machine hasn't gone any fast. It's not going any faster. Right. And I tried to, I tried to explain to them, well, listen, yes, RAM is important, but at a certain point it's diminishing returns. And I remember saying, you know, the RAM is holding the info is stripping it's coming from the hard drive to the ram and then going and being crunched in the cpu in the processor i'm like think of it as the hard drive is the bowl of cereal the processor is your mouth and the ram is the spoon <laughs> <laughs> and the spoon yes if the spoon is absolutely tiny it's going to be very very difficult mm. but if the spoon is huge and enormous like it kind of there's, there's only so much your mouth can actually take in at a time so i i think of i often think of that imagery when you're looking at a video and i'm trying to explain something you're processing it's like you're eating the information yes you know the storyteller is telling you or you know it could be anyone not just me but like a director or whatever a movie they're telling you the information. You're supposed to pick up on the information. They have to be careful not to give you too much because you can't chew that fast, if you know what I mean. You can't, you it can't to, go in that fast. You have to stagger it and you have to. Yeah, you've got to stagger it out like sure. at, a, at a nice pace, but not then not too slow that you might, you know, antagonize people or, you know, people get bored of what, you know, you've got to give them just the right amount that they can actually process and it can go into their head and then they'll remember certain things. So I think of it as like an ingestion kind of thing. And that's probably the reason why I keep mentioning food or maybe I'm just hungry. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, and it's interesting though. And, and I appreciate that, but I, I know you got to go. So I do want to say before you go, I really appreciate you doing this. It was tremendously generous of you. And, of course, man. And I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I learned a lot. I thought, we covered a lot of great topics. We got to about half of my questions, but that's okay. That's how these things are. But well, we can do, we can do a part two at some point in the future, and, and I'll tell you why. Um, because I love your questions. Uh, oh, your questions you. actually are, are are amazing. They're really good questions. You don't always get great questions in an interview that make you really think. So now I'm going to go to dinner and I'm going to be staring off into the distance, thinking about all the things that you said and trying to process these You're going to have things. a better answer. You're going to be like, I, I should have you... said this. Yeah. Or, <laughs> or just like, God, maybe he is right. Maybe I am obsessed with food. And maybe I am sensitive and guarded. And, you know, I'm just, I think you ruined my date. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. But, you know, I hold you in the highest esteem. I mean, obviously for me, just inviting you and having you on here meant a lot to me. And, and you've been very helpful even before we talked on my other profile at Instagram. You always were very helpful. And, and you don't sure. have to be. I mean, you're a busy guy. You have a lot of people to follow you. So I really appreciate that. You're, you're really a good dude, and I appreciate it. Thanks so much, man. It was, it was, as I said, I knew I'd enjoy it, but I didn't, I didn't know I'd enjoy it this much. It was really, really great, uh, great to talk about this stuff. I wish I had more time. But maybe it's smart to maybe divide it into two. Yeah. So it does, it's not too long winded. We could do part two in another few weeks. And you I can would hit love me it. With more, with more questions. I'll bring a, bo a box of Kleenex next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on my couch, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's what we're here for. But yeah, I'd love to have you back. You have a standing um, invitation anytime you like. But I'll check in with you in a couple of weeks and, and we can set something up. I'd love to have you back. Fantastic, man. Okay, okay, enjoy well, your trip. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you All so right, much. Bet. Hopefully I'll get some interesting footage. Yeah, well, I'm sure you will. All right, ladies and gentlemen. And you, 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 might, you, might, you might see Led Zeppelin, that, that uh, suggestion you made about Led Zeppelin. You might see that one popping up at some time. I'd be channel. super happy if you'll I know, did. You'll know it was you. <laughs> that would be great. Well, thanks again, my friend. Thank you so much. We'll talk again soon. Take it easy, man. Have a good you, one. You too, brother. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.